what's in the way. It's been a quirky year with more blemishes than a middle school class picture. That includes both teams tonight. Kentucky's November loss to Evansville hangs over these Wildcats like that blue moon Elvis crooned about. And LSU, the Tigers lost to Vanderbilt, whose Commodores righted the ship to snap a 26-game conference losing streak. So here we are, Baton Rouge on Super Tuesday. Kentucky and LSU hoping not to stub a toe. This is a Super Tuesday Sonic Blockbuster. And tonight, the SEC, a battle for first place. We're at the Maravich Center. And tonight, Kentucky comes calling to take on an LSU team that all of a sudden, two weeks ago, found itself two games clear of the field and now looks up at the Wildcats, who are in sole possession of first place. Kentucky may be playing its best basketball of the season. They're 10 and 2. Auburn, 9 and 3. LSU, 9 and 3. Florida. 9-4, Mississippi State and South Carolina, both out of the NCAA tournament, according to Lenardi, but both on the rise. We have Jay Billis, Carl Ravitch, Marty Smith. You already heard him stub his toe. LSU stubbed his toe the last three games. Kentucky's playing really well. What a huge opportunity tonight for both. SEC championship implications, just like last year when these two teams played. And it's a team that both teams can really score and attack the paint off the dribble with playmakers, and they can really get to the free throw line. With that being said, let's take a look at tonight's Sonic Blockbuster. And let's take a look at the playmakers. First, for LSU, Skylar Mays, the outstanding guard that scored over 1,500 points. The point guard, Javante Smart, and Trendon Watford. All of them big time scorers. And Ashton Hagen's one of the best defenders in the country and best assist men. Tyrese Maxey, a big time scorer, especially in big games. And Emmanuel quickly has taken over the scoring lead for Kentucky, their best three point shooter and by far their best free throw shooter. Ready for our tip of our Sonic Blockbuster matchup. You'll see the size advantage Nick Richards has over anybody wearing an LSU uniform. Emmett Williams will jump. He's 6'6". Six, six. Doug Simons will throw the ball up. It's controlled by Hagens in Kentucky in their blue LSU and their home whites. Uh, Nick Richards is going to be a huge piece in this game. Can Kentucky get the ball inside to him, let him go to work? They do initially. He's quickly double teamed. Hagens. Try to throw the alley-oop to Montgomery. It ends up in the hands of Richards. In traffic, Montgomery there to pick up the offensive rebound. Well, Richards drew so much attention that opened up the offensive glass for Montgomery. It's big for him to start off well. Skyler Mays, a player of the year candidate. He's number four. Williams, Days, and Watford in the front. First shot missed, offensive rebound. Montgomery with the block, but a good job there by Darius Days. Take a look at the Kentucky lineup, JB. You mentioned the three guards. They're terrific. Hagens, Maxey, and quickly. Montgomery will be spelled by Sestina, Nate Sestina, and Keon Brooks. We'll see Johnny Juzang come in off the bench as well. Brendan Watford, who's about 6'9", is guarding Ashton Hagens. That way he doesn't have to really go out and cover Hagens. He can be a, a help defender that just plays center field in the middle of the lane. Maxey kept it alive, and the shot by Hagens, no good. So a couple of Three point shots off for Hagens and Maxey. Neither one of these teams a great three point shooting team. Well, Darius Days, who got that first offensive rebound bucket. Look out! What a play. <laughs> Emmett Williams just threw one down. That's the penetration by Javante Smart and the playmaking ability. And what a finish by Williams. That gets the crowd into this game early. And as you would expect, it's a huge crowd. They're used to championship type play here, having just won a football crown. Well, Emmett Williams is not guarding Richards out on the perimeter. He's got to set a ball screen out there. Hagens, Richards kicks it around, keeps it alive. Four on the shot clock. Montgomery finger roll. Nice play by E.J. Montgomery. Well, you let Montgomery see the ball go through the basket a couple of times, and now he's a much more confident player. He's the type of player you can't allow to get going. Hagen's terrific defender, Javante Smart. Soft touch off the window. And even against the defender, Ravi, as good as Ashton Hagen, Smart can put his head down. He's so strong. He's got such strong legs. What a bad pass by Hagen. Yep. Thought that Watford had turned his head. He had not. And Hagen's has had trouble with turnovers the last five games. In fact, been up and down the last five. Some of the Kentucky players already looking at each other going, what are you doing? 
Tough drive, days in the middle. And LSU will make a living on the offensive glass. Smart three. Too strong. He's been off most of the year with that three. They expected big things from him. Against LSU, all five guys have to go to the glass. Marty Smith is with us, Marty. Good evening, gentlemen. Today at shoot around for Kentucky, John Calipari told me that as it pertains to his team's performance potential, he felt like they'd maxed out three weeks ago. Enter Super Tuesday two weeks ago when Mississippi State came calling in Lexington and E.J. Montgomery had a breakthrough night. The next game against Tennessee, guard Johnny Juzang had a breakthrough night and suddenly Calipari said, hey, our issues aren't schematic. Our issues are everyone making sure they accept the role that makes us the best version of this team. He did say, though, if one guy doesn't do that, it kills us. We've already seen Montgomery really active tonight. Active, good shot there by Tyrese Maxey, absorbing contact a couple games ago, Jay. That's what John Calipari said. You've seen the growth in Maxey, his ability to absorb the contact and play through it, and there he made the basket. Yeah, just a ball screen, and Darius Days had to switch off on Maxey. He can't keep up with him, and Maxey was smart to go right into his chest to draw the foul and complete the play. And both these teams, Ravi, shoot a ton of free throws. They yep. have about 25 free throws a game in SEC play. So whichever team is able to get to the free throw line more often, they both knock down a high percentage. That's going to be a huge advantage. Watford trying to take advantage of Montgomery working in the lane. That's blocked. And they're going to get a foul. Just getting a paint touch. Trent Watford is such a good driver. He's a, an outstanding offensive player, just a freshman. But he, even though he's got 21 double-figure games and he's averaging 14, 15 points a game, he leads LSU in turnovers. And Kentucky's got to go after him when he puts the ball on the deck. Younger brother of Christian Watford, of course, did a huge shot for Indiana a few years ago against this Kentucky program. That was back in 2012. Yeah. As we see Trendon Watford shooting these free throws, it's interesting, guys. He struggled mightily to begin the season. So what Coach Will Wade started to do was demand of him after every single practice to make 22 of 25 at one goal. And if he didn't do that, they moved to another goal with that same goal. Wade stood there. He stands there. He rebounds for Watford, passes the ball back to him. And if he doesn't go 22 of 25, they do it again. Yeah, it's an interesting free throw routine he does a little rocker step and then steps forward to the line with a really wide stance a 2 2 one three quarter court pressure here and Kentucky should beat this to score quickly has a wide open three and it's an air ball and just to cap that Marty story uh, Watford only had a shoot at one basket today so he made the 22 of the 25 he didn't have to go to the other end to shoot 25 more well every practice and shoot around Will Wade stands there with just the two of them and he watches them do it Daniel Quick has been a better road three-point shooter than at home. In fact, Kentucky's been much better on the road shooting the three than at home, and they've launched three of them and have missed all of them today. Watford uses his body and quickly tries to run with Hagens. Nice job by Montgomery to make him take a tough shot. Good hands by Watford. It deflects off Maxi and it goes out of bounds. Second turnover for Kentucky. Kentucky going a little bit too fast. Now that was one, take an easy shot fake and then go. Nate Sestina comes into the game. He's one point shy of 1,000 for his career. Many of those, most of them came at Bucknell. He's a grad transfer here at Kentucky. Sestina is a good shooter. He hadn't hit a three since January. He's off of Watford, gave him a wide open three. A little pick and pop, and Watford can not only hit that shot, but he can put it on the deck and drive it from there. Taylor 14 into the game. He's at the top of the key is Sestina. That ball was deflected and Nick Richards picked it off the rim and threw it down. Any time that Nick Richards defender goes to block a shot, all you're doing is opening up the offensive glass for Richards. You're, you're better off not coming over from the weak side unless you know you have it. Because that's asking a lot to have a guard rotate down. Sometimes when you think shot blocking is a strength, if you don't get it, it becomes a weakness because it opens up the offensive glass. 
Sestina one on one in the post against Watford. Williams tries to come over, and Javante Smart can't get down there to block out Richards. Almost like a pass. Richards having an amazing year. Ninety-four feet with LSU Skyler Mays. Tell me about your major. Uh, well, I'm a pre-med kinesis major. Uh, uh, kinesis. What do you mean? <laughs> Speak English. Kinesis means what? Kinesis is kind of like physical therapy for someone who wouldn't know what I'm talking Kinesiology. about. Kinesiology. Yeah. All right. Kinesiology. What do you want? So you're gonna be? You want to be a doctor? Yeah, that's the plan. Now, how many siblings do you have? I have seven siblings. And where do you fall on that I'm list? I'm the third oldest. And what was a meal like at your house? Uh, it, was, it started to get repetitive, but my mom does a great job. My parents are the best. You have any pregame superstitions? Uh, nah, just get your work done and, you know, stick to your strengths. Favorite player growing up? Uh, Chris Paul. 94 feet. I love when they say favorite player growing up and it's a guy that's like 27 and still playing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that really makes you feel old. But what a uh, what a, a smart young man he is. Uh, he changed his major from biology to kinesiology. And he said when he did that, he lost he lost 30 hours, which is the equivalent of two semesters. Yeah, yeah. But he made it up in no time with summer school and all that. But just a dedicated student. And what a terrific, uh, terrific young man. Having a terrific year, too, on the court as well as in the classroom. One of ten candidates for the Jerry West Shooting Guard of the Year Award. And he has scored over 23 in each of his last three games. Had 30 against Auburn. It's 9-8, Kentucky over LSU. 10-2, Wildcats. 9-3, Tigers. Tied with Auburn in second place at 9-3 in the SEC. Pretty good job by Mays guarding that pin down that they tried to get for Maxey. That was being run for Tyrese Maxey. Sistina just barreled into the defender and sent him to the floor. That's an offensive foul. Good position by Marlon Taylor. He's a 6'5 senior. He had offseason foot surgery, so he didn't play on that trip they took to Spain. But he had 13 points, 10 rebounds against Ole Miss. He's just trying to get back to 100% where you know, he can be consistent with that kind of performance every game. Marlon Taylor back from an injury. Charles Manning played 16 minutes. He's back from an injury. Not a lot of depth on this LSU team. Manning gives them a good defender, but he's trying to get his legs back as well, missing so many games. Smart got held up in the air. Nice rebound, and it's a block by Richards. How about that rebound by Williams? That's a big three, and they need that from him. Manning is a lockdown defender, but he knocks down the three. First one of the game for either team. Right before he got hurt, he got hurt against Texas A&M, but the game before against Mississippi State, he put up 15 points, and he's a capable scorer. Quickly, tough shot, and got the benefit of a late foul, maybe on Emmett Williams, but that was uh, somewhat out of control and wild. Kansas and Baylor, Saturday noon Eastern time. That's another Sonic blockbuster. This one will have a huge impact, like this one does on the SEC on the Big 12 title. JB, the game day crew will be there. What do you got on that game? Well, Baylor's the real thing, and Kansas is playing as well as any team in the country right now. Baylor beat Kansas in Allen Fieldhouse, which is no small feat, so they're gonna try to protect their home court in Waco, but both Kansas and Baylor are expected to be number one seeds, and I'm not sure that, that the loser of this particular game falls off the one line. Mm -hmm. the, the one team I think that can get up to the one line is Duke. Uh, and a lot's gonna depend, obviously. Gonzaga plays BYU uh, in Provo coming up. That's gonna be a huge game for BYU. I think they need to run the table to stay on the one line, and San Diego State needs to run the table to stay on the one line. Preseason, Will Wade played the Baylor team, and uh, as he self-deprecatingly said, you know, I left that preseason game. It was early. I thought Baylor would be like a fourth or fifth place team in the Big 12. How dumb am I? Well, they lost the game I, I saw them in in Alaska. They lost to Washington. Now, Washington was full strength at the time. Had Quade Green, who's no, used to play at Kentucky, yep. uh, became ineligible at Washington. What a move. He got fouled. That's a beautiful move by Marlon Taylor. Just one step and gone. Yeah, you just can't allow a middle drive there. Second foul on EJ Montgomery, and you're seeing here just in the last two trips down, Jay, having Manning back, makes the three, Taylor back, drives, and is going to go to the free throw line. 
valuable minutes. And with Nick Richards out of the game, LSU is going to be even more resolute to get the ball to the cup. They want to get to the rim. Here comes Keon Brooks. Cal Perry told us earlier today, you got Montgomery, you got Keon Brooks, you got Johnny Juzang, and you got Nate Sestina. Of those four, as Marty sort of started to allude to, I need two of them to play really well. I need two of them. Otherwise, we're really playing four guys. Yeah, or, or at least just don't just don't hurt us. Right. You know, he's saying they're sort of the, the players taking the Hippocratic oath the basketball do no harm. Tough one for Brooks right into the game and off the bench, and he shoots and misses. Skyler Mays, good ball fake, right. And a good dish on the baseline. They rushed it, worried about a block shot. Just go up. Quickly. And that's going to be a goaltend on Taylor. They're going to go up and try to block everything and rebound everything. They can jump through the roof. Well, Emmanuel quickly has been outstanding in SEC games. Yeah. You know, he's averaging close to 18 points in SEC play, shooting about 43% from three, even though he struggled last couple of games. And he's getting to the free throw line about seven times a game in SEC games. I mean, that's a big number. And he's good defensively, too. I mean, this is a heck of a matchup between him and Mays. Two big bodies here. Sustina Days just worked his way in, but he gets called for the steps. Only the first turnover for LSU. Your point, too, about quickly getting the free throw line. He doesn't miss when he gets there. He shoots almost 92 percent from the stripe and he's been great on the road averaging almost 18 and a half a game Terrific job to keep that ball alive to keep Sestina from getting that Kentucky's a, a pretty good rebounding team They go after it with two hands, but they've got to have Richards on the floor Manning dish. That's a block from behind by Higgins well, That's why he is a, a prime candidate for national defensive player of the year Quickly kick corner no Good pass. Quickly kept clapping his hands. He wanted it, and he buries it. Higgins made that play with that little ball fake. Gave a little ball fake that opened up the drive, drew the defense, and then he's able to kick it to ball side corner. And one thing, Ravi, you cannot do is you cannot help off ball side corner. Watford swatted by Sestina. Fourth block of the game for Kentucky. Mays steps into a three, no good. And how about that block a couple plays ago by Ashton Higgins? He makes more basket saving plays, whether it's a block, a steal, you name it. And he can turn around plays in a hurry. He's got, you have to know where he is all the time. Like a free safety. Christina in traffic. They're gonna get Manny who came down and got him on the hand. Higgins averages close to seven assists a game. Now that little ball fake got Watford to move, got into the lane, and drew the defense, everybody in the lane, and quickly makes him pay. Great shot, great play by Higgins. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. Free throws coming up for Kentucky, and they try to build on their biggest lead early. They're up by four. One versus three, one of the biggest games in the Big 12 in recent memory. Game day will be there, and they'll be rocking the house waiting for that one to start. Noon Eastern, early start, a little breakfast and basketball, depending on where you're watching it. 16-12 here, one of the Blue Bloods in college basketball, Kentucky leading by four. And you talk about a Blue Blood, you think about Kansas and their duo of Dodson and Udoka Azubuki. Azubuki's played great lately. Well, he's leading the nation in field goal percentage, and I think he's got a few more attempts to go, and he'll be the all-time leading field goal percentage shooter in NCAA history, passing Taco Fall and Steve Johnson of Oregon State fame. But Devon Dotson is having a spectacular year. Just came off a 29-point game last night against Iowa State. He'd not been shooting the three ball well, but he certainly did last night against the Cyclones. And it's going to be hard to find a better guard. They're great guards in this game, but I'm not sure anybody's better than Devon Dotson or has been. Out of the 
Timeout, Nick Richards misses the baseline jumper. See a good game, Jared Butler going, of course, for Baylor. That's a sonic blockbuster, that's Saturday noon Eastern time. Back here, 16-12, Mays has been so good lately. Finally drives and he breaks the steal, his first two of the night. Well, Days did a really nice job of twisting that ball screen. They thought initially he was going to set it to bring Mays to his left, then he switched to bring him to his right, and that opened up Mays to his left. Hagen's found a lane, and he lays it in. The big body of Sestina helped clear the way. Well, when you're not going to guard Ashton Hagen's, that means he can get downhill a little bit easier on you and take up that space. Just a smart play by Hagen's to drive. For a blocks kick, wide open three, no good. And how about that effort by Emmett Williams? Well, that's, to, that's just pursuing the ball because Emmanuel quickly had the inside track to that ball. And Williams just took it away from him. Days to the hole, finger roll, Richards goal tending. A smart play by Days to get that up quickly rather than try to. Take it in, dunk it, or get it off the glass. It's just a little finger roll, but got it up quickly, almost like it was a, a floater. And Richards was so close to the basket, it was going to be automatically on the way down. Ashton Hagens takes the break. Maxi will run the point. Johnny Juzang into the game as well, number 10. He's running Maxi off of all kinds of screens. Now a high ball screen. Bad pass, and that's a turnover. Calipari quickly looks to Hagens. All he had to do was throw it back to Richards. You know, let him convey it. And it wasn't a bad idea to get the shake action, try to find Juzang. It was just a, a bad pass, but the easier pass, just throw the easy pass to Richards. Mays, we're going to have some call. It's going to be an offensive foul on Skyler Mays. The drive before this, Calipari looked at his defenders and said, if we just stood still, we would have gotten a charge on that day's drive. This time, Maxi did plant his feet and drew the charge. Yeah, the, the drive, they're just, it didn't make the, the defense move. They're playing against a set defense. And, and if you're going to drive it against that, you're going to drive right into traffic. Good screen by Nick Richards. Back pick, now he's going to come up again. Quickly floater, too strong, Sestina. He got a hit going up. Nick Richards went up like a volleyball player, picks it out of the sky, 14 on the clock. Three no good, and they're going to get Nate Sestina with a push. Boy, Watford fouled Sestina across the arm when he was going up. Now it cost Sestina a foul. And right when Sestina got that rebound, he went up and Watford got him right on the arm. Amazing, you were talking about Nick Richards setting screens and then moving and coming out to set a high screen. How much how much work he does on every offensive trip. Sometimes you never notice it. You, you of course, picked it up. But, boy, he works a lot on the offensive end. Sometimes he never touches the ball. Works really hard. And then geez, that was like a Ed Orgeron like to see Days <laughs> carry the ball through the line like that. He had to carry it through like a running back. Yeah, it's so much different to play a big guy role in today's game in college basketball because you're out setting ball screens. You know, it used to be, you know, you ran down the floor, got low post position. Maybe you'd, you'd set a cross screen or a down screen or something. And then defensively, now you're guarding all these ball screens. You're guarding all over the right. floor. And then you have to get back and protect the rim. So it's a, it's, it's a lot easier as a big guy to pick up a foul now than it was 25, 30 years ago. Higgins into the paint, getting bumped, banged. Who's that off? Stays with Kentucky. And Williams says not true, but it stays with Big Blue Nation. NBA players got a couple of more days off for the All-Star break, and then the playoff push will start. ESPN's Friday night doubleheader, OKC. Jokic and the Nuggets take on Paul and the Thunder. Then Zion and the Pelicans battle the Blazers as the shot from Juzang is missed. Maxi's legs gave out from underneath him, and he threw up an air ball. Our coverage starts NBA Countdown 7 Eastern on ESPN and the app. Another block for Richards, five in the game for Kentucky. High arcing, three falls, and that's the second of the game 
for Charles Manning. And what a play by Williams. Got his shot blocked, did not quit on the play, and wound up getting it out. That's what got the offensive rebound, and that gives you a wide open three as a result. Good pass to Richards, who hits the little jump hook in the lane. And Nick Richards is, he's not jawing at his opponent, but he wanted to let him know that there's going to be more of that coming. He's got a look on his face that he's ready for a fight in a good way. He's ready to, to fight the right way on a basketball court to make plays. Now, the coaches made it quite clear to Nick this morning during their shoot around whoever is guarding you is going to be 6 6 and no taller as the three from Watford goes down. And you're 6 11. All of a sudden, LSU, the Tigers hitting their threes. Watford is so versatile on the offensive end. Deion Brooks blocked from behind. That's Manning, and it'll go out of bounds off LSU. But how about the activity from Charles Manning in his second game back? Twenty-two twenty. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. And in part by the Carhop Classic. Only it's Sonic. May have a classic brewing here. I think what drives me is my will to win. Uh, I don't like losing. I like doing whatever it takes to win the game. Uh, if it's rebounding, scoring, guarding the best player, whatever it takes, I want to win the game. Uh, my goal is here is to win a national championship and just get better every single day, building relationships with my friends and these coaches. Freshman out of Garland, Texas, Tyrese Maxey putting in a heck of a lot of effort to try to win college basketball's highest individual honor, the Wendy's Wooden Watch tonight. Well, he plays so hard and he's doing such a better job over the last 15 games or so of playing through contact. And he's a, an excellent driver, especially to his right. But he's finding a lot of resistance getting to the basket now, and he's got to be able to, to make those plays through contact, doing a much better job of it. Well, zone look 1 3 1 right now for LSU out of the timeout. They kick it to the maxi three, no good. Brooks battles for it, tries to keep it alive, and it's off the foot. So you look at the NBA mock draft ESPN does Max he's like number six. Yeah Well, there's still a long way to go. This is not a great draft year, which may chase a, a few players out thinking that they got to go now they'll be drafted higher But you know, Maxi certainly has a lot of ability I'll tell you Ravi, you better get to the glass in this game Both teams are getting a ton of offensive rebounds and I'm sure both coaches are saying hey man you got to keep them off the offensive glass. The message is probably the same in both huddles. You got to get all five, all five guys to the defensive glass. Ten for Kentucky, seven offensive rebounds for LSU in this one. Yeah, LSU's got ten second chance points. Maybe they got to start putting Nick Richards in some ball screens, move him around a little bit, get him away from the basket. That ball's deflected, it's a turnover. Crowd wanted a walk on Brooks, didn't get it, and the rebound LSU. It's a tough pass Hagens presented to Brooks there. I don't think he was either ready for it or was so close to him. Yeah, that's on Hagens for giving that ball up to a big guy in a position where he, he can't really do much with it. And Charles Manning's really given some Excellent minutes thus far. Tough drive, no good. Richards got whacked in the face when he grabbed that rebound, but he cleared it. Deion Brooks lays it in on the other end. Boy, Kentucky is so good in transition. When they get out and run, I mean, they score about 30% of their points in transition. And they've got so many playmakers from the guard spot. See all their points coming in the paint. 16, only one three-pointer tonight. That's a tough shot over the stretched arms of Keon Brooks, Javante Smart. Just a sophomore. He's, he's so physical and has such strong legs. Changes speeds really well. His last five games, he's played really well. Hagens will get called for the walk. Good defense that time down. You know, Smart, this, this wasn't 
just going a thousand miles an hour just a little one two step at the end and Kentucky didn't do a bad job of making him take a difficult two going away from the rim but just a really good offensive play by Javante Smart Javante getting a lot of minutes two of the last three games he's played the full 40 is Nick Richards and John Calipari get into a little discussion on the sideline you know why Will Wade isn't taking Smart out he's just too valuable Days can shoot the three, not that time. Darius Days shooting 50% from three, and this is not a small sample size. He's taken over 200 of them. So just a tough shot by Maxi, and one that was a difficult two in transition against a set defense. Well, that looked like a foul there. It's a walk. That's a flush. LSU is sticking with it, Ravi. And they're playing to the end of plays. The question is, can they keep it up and can they continue the defensive intensity? Christina hasn't done that in three games. Attempts of three and he can't get it to go. In fact, he's made one in his last five games. LSU's got to keep attacking the paint off the dribble. I'm not sure that was the shot, even though Javante Smart can make that. You, know, you take a bad one and it leads to a, a layup on the other end. It's remarkable how that works. That's it. That's LSU's it. Having, having great success attacking the paint. So keep going at what's right. successful. And then if you draw the defense, kick it out for an open shot, that's a lot different. May sees the lane, finger roll, can't get it to go. He'll go to the free throw line and shoot two, or he's a good free throw shooter. Said Days was a good three-point shooter. I gave him a little too much credit. He shoots about 28%, not 50%. Big-time rebound, and they are going after the ball and not settling. Excellent job. Our inclusive presentation of college basketball brought to you by Wendy's. Try a big bacon classic today. The SEC on ESPN, back after this. All right, guys, thank you very much. Look forward to the halftime report coming up still. 3.12 to go here. This is the SEC on ESPN. Marty Smith, Jay Billis, Carl Ravick, Super Tuesday, and a Sonic Blockbuster. What's it like to go Blockbuster to Blockbuster? Like, you're going to have a game at noon, which is a block. Like, you're just living in the Blockbuster world. It's a lot of tots, baby. A lot of Sonic tots. <laughs> Marty Smith, what do you have? In every single huddle tonight, gentlemen, I think John Calipari has implored his young men to try to contain the dribble drives. He said in this huddle just a moment ago, on these ball screens that LSU continues to set, force them into that ball screen so that you can have help on the other side and try to contain that dribble drive. It's killing Kentucky right now when Skyler Mays and his teammates go to the rim. Well, Skylar Mays has been refusing. He refused to double drag, got all the way to the to the rim. And at least when you force your guy into the ball handler into the screen, then the, the screener's defender knows exactly what to do. But it can really screw you up if you let him go either way. Same with cutters. You got to force a cutter one way. You can't let the cutter make up his mind. You got to make up his mind for him. is going to get called for the foul. They push on Johnny Juze. That's his second. From one number four to another. Nick Richards, a little slow start tonight, but it feels like in most games, Kentucky starts slow, and maybe Richards does, and he ends up around 18 and, you know, 12 rebounds. Yeah, the difference in Nick Richards this year, if he does get off to a slow start, he doesn't let that get to him in the second half. He has big second half, so he got the ball. That was a set play to get the ball right into Richards. Got inside position. You let him get two feet in the paint, and it's all over. He's such a good finisher, especially this year. He, he's just matured so well. Deflects that. Oh, Johnny Juzang could have had it, didn't. That's the eighth touch that Richards has had. 
quick, these quick hands. Juzang ahead of the field, he finds him. And he waited a little too long, and it's Javante Smart who comes out of the field with the basketball. Yeah, he just took it right away from Sestina. Richards blocked that, Sestina picked it up. Boy, Richards has like four blocks already. And he's blocking and changing everything when he's around the rim. So tough to get it over him. Team has seven blocks tonight, Kentucky. There's the same play trying to get it into Richards. Juzang launches a three. Bodies are flying everywhere. Days is open in the corner. Look out. Joe Burr didn't do that once this year for LSU. Yeah, that definitely sailed. But Richards just a little duck in right into the chest of Emmett Williams, and he catch it with two feet in the paint. It's all over. And Smart tries to go over him with the jump hook, or the running hook, and he's able to pick it right out of the air. That's the way shots are supposed to be blocked out of the air. And he has had a, just a great junior season. Sure has. 6'11 with a 7'5 wingspan. Now Richards has matured the way it's sort of old school. There's a high low. He's got to get the ball right there. He was wide open. Now that was a mistake by Quickly. Watch out. He recovers the mistake by coming from behind to steal the basketball. Kentucky's going to call a timeout here with 52 to go, down by two. He's being told right now, give him the ball. <laughs> give him the ball, we'll give you a 30-second timeout. Come back after this. As soon as we're done here, Sports Center, Kenny Main, John Anderson, Rachel Nichols interview with the Grizzlies rookie Phenom, John Morant, plus live in Vegas for Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury's arrival. Mel Kuyper Jr.'s mock draft 2.0. Baseball sign stealing. LeBron James and Aaron Judge chime in today. Sports Center is right on ESPN as soon as we are done, and of course on the ESPN app. All right, you got a play coming out of the break here? Well, I, I don't know exactly what they're going to do, but you have to think that John Calipari wants to get Tyrese Maxey started a little bit. And going inside to Nick Richards, he should have gotten the ball the last time down. So if you can get it inside, great. I think Maxey's got to get going. Being guarded by Taylor right now. One of six in the game. Hagen's one of five. Sestina one of five. There's a pin down for Maxey. There it is. They got him the shot they wanted, just didn't make it. Hagen's launches a three right on line, and he buries it. Gives Sestina credit for the offensive rebound. It is just remarkable, Ravi. Anytime there's an offensive rebound, that is the best time to shoot a three. Because LSU's thinking about grabbing the defensive board and going the other way. They are not thinking about playing more defense. Yep. You can get a step in three if you are smart and kick it back out. That's a big time play by Sestina. Coming out of that last timeout, Kentucky was given a delay warning. They weren't ready to get on the floor, JB. Yeah, the official officials came over to tell us what had just happened, delay a game warning for not getting out of the huddle fast enough. Too bad there's no delay of game warning for uh, replay. Love to call some technicals on replay review. Too long, <laughs> unnecessary. <laughs> Yeah, this game last year led us to even more replay because of the uh, the tip in at the buzzer. Yeah, the, miss, it was the missed basket interference. Right. Last second opportunity here for LSU, down one. Got to not only guard the initial shot, but the offensive rebound. Got to get going. Watford. No good offensive rebound, Days, and that'll do it. No foul called on the floor. Kentucky will have a one-point lead, 29-28. Marty Smith corralling John Calipari. Coach, how do you assess that first half performance? The crazy thing about this game, the interesting thing is, the whole point of it is to put the ball in that basket up there 
And when you miss every shot and you're up one, I'm whistling and skipping going into the halftime. Got to make shots. Last two games, I mean, guys wide open. Nobody near a guy. You missed. It's okay. It's part of this. They're not robots. They're not machines. But at some point, you've done this your whole life. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. <laughs> Well, they were 2 of 22 from 3 last game. They're 2 of 10 in this one, and 12 of 38 overall, 31%. It didn't look like he was skipping and whistling. He didn't <laughs> this is Super Tuesday, presented by Progressive. Skyler Mays, all the way to the rack. Tipped in, is it good? Oh. They call it Quite good. They will look at it, but they call it good. And they just told Coach Cal it's an LSU win here at Rupp 73 71. Helped them go on to win the SEC title last year. All part of our Sonic Blockbuster history tonight. As Big Blue Nation, Kentucky goes to the purple and gold of LSU. It has been a close competitive basketball game. It has not been a game in which you've seen very many shots go in a total of 22 by both teams 12 for Kentucky and 10 for LSU. Marty Smith in a moment. Jay Bill is here. Oh, you tell me bad offense. Good defense. What is it? A little bit of both. I mean, I think John Calipari was right. There have been some open shots missed, but most everything else has been contested. But the real battle has been on the offensive glass that when the, the first shot is taken, that's when the fight has begun. And there have been 21 offensive rebounds in this game, 11 for Kentucky, 10 for LSU. Both teams have scored 10 points off those offensive rebound chances. And you had better be strong in going after that ball and with two hands. And the difference in the game really is going to be rebounding. And Nick Richards got off to a good start on the glass, was blocking shots. E.J. Montgomery with the stick back. All five guys have to get to the defensive glass to be able to, to end a defensive possession. Not all American spotlight. The McDonald's All Americans quickly seven, Richards six, Maxi three. That is Maxi one of seven from the floor as we're ready for the second half of our Sonic Blockbuster matchup. Skyler Mays right to the hole. Richards, that's off the backboard. It's goaltending. Uh, Marty spoke to Calipari, who had a walk-off, which was great. What did Will Wade tell you? I did have the opportunity to talk to Will Wade at halftime, Ravi, and he said, we have to be more physical. We have to hit them low immediately, establish that physicality. We have to finish in the paint, and we have to take care of the ball. Eight turnovers in the first half, that's far too many. We want to win a game against a team of this caliber. Various days could run, as you said, for Coach O. He could also do uh, the hurdles if they need him to do that. Well, one thing I think Will Wade has to be fairly pleased with is the defensive effort his team put on in the first half. And this is a team that's been giving up you know, 90 points a game over its last five. And teams have been scoring on LSU at will, and they've just been outscoring folks if they win a game. Hagan's three, he's open, and he knocks that one down right in front of the bench. And Calipari gives a fist bump. So that's big for Ashton Hagan's. His last six games coming into this one, he's only averaging eight points a game, five assists, and four turnovers. Williams, they're going to get Montgomery with the touch foul. That's going to be Montgomery's third. Watch Calipari's reaction to the three. Really good screen by E.J. Montgomery. That freed up. Ashton Hagens to take his time and John Calipari with a little fist bump there to celebrate Ashton Hagens knocking a shot down. Just anybody knocking a shot down. He always says Calipari's really funny. He always says, look, you don't have to make them all, but you can't miss them all. <laughs> <laughs> The two of 22 from three point land on Saturday. Now they're three of 10, three of 11 in this game. Huge game in the SEC with Kentucky on top at 10 and 2. LSU and Auburn sitting there at 9 and 3. You got Alabama at 6 and 6. You got a South Carolina team that's playing a lot better 
Big game with Mississippi State tomorrow night. You'll be able to see Mississippi State, South Carolina, Alabama, A&M tomorrow night on the SEC network. And look at Joe Lenardi's bracketology. Alabama and Mississippi State were the first four outline. South Carolina's gaining some steam, too. Just opportunities at the free throw line. One of the things Jay said is going to be a huge factor in this game, how teams shoot at the free throw line. Well, he didn't have a ton of free throws in the first half. My guess is you're going to see these teams attack the paint even more in the second. There Quick, it is. Pretty move. Because with Nick Richards in that dunk spot along the, yeah. the short corner, if you help up, Emmanuel quickly just lobs it up to the rim. Otherwise, he's got one-on-one -one coverage all the way to the basket, and he took advantage of it. Well, she's done a pretty good job of defending against that. You see that four, five, six times a game for Kentucky. I haven't seen it really more than, I think, one time tonight. They got numbers here. But Bounce pass, pass to Maxi. Kentucky came away with nothing on that and wound up taking a jump shot instead of getting all the way to the rim. Skyler Mays says, see you later. Sestina with a block. A lot of contact, no call. Maxi gets it to go on a block. He'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, really difficult for Darius Days to stay in front of Tyrese Maxi with that little Euro step, that one two. That's a ton of contact there going up, but Sestina gets all ball on the block. And it is awfully difficult to try to back up. He wound up backing up into the restricted arc and never really was able to get set. Smart play by Tyrese Maxey to take it all the way to the bucket and put the officials at a decision. Score a mentality, huh? Tyrese Maxey, he's one of seven. He just charges to the rim. You could never tell from his body language or his face if he's having a one for seven night. And they get their largest lead of the game by seven. Well, they know quickly Maxi they know they've got the green light as long as they're taking good shots that Kentucky has to have them aggressive to score they just don't want to settle Tough pass down low to Emmett Williams and Maxi may have hurt himself uh, quickly I should say right in front of how about the, the he's right in front of the LSU cheerleaders how about the cheerleader exhibition at halftime those, those aren't cheerleaders they're athletes they were unbelievable and speaking of that, you know, Dwayne Peavy, who works at Kentucky, also uh, has worked with the SEC office. Mm -hmm. His daughter, Caitlin Peavy, is having her high school cheerleading senior night at Lexington Catholic High School. Dwayne's here, wants to be there. Yeah. I don't know why. He should have faked an injury, stay home to watch, <laughs> watch Caitlin in her senior night as a cheerleader at Lexington Catholic. Williams free throw first one is good it's just, just knee on knee right there the right knee just on the inside of it yeah Williams an 80% free throw shooter as quickly gets that knee looked at and knocks down the second one there's this 2-2-1 two, two, three-quarter court pressure and just going to set a screen to open it up to get a advantage situation on the back side Johnny Juzang finds the bottom of the net. Wide open, good pass from Maxi to find him for a three. Well, that screen that was set by Nate Sestina all the way at the opposite free throw line, Kentucky calls that a smack. We're going to run smack. And that really opened it up to get a, a three on two. And that's really what basketball is about, just getting advantage situations. Skyler Mays answers with a three of his own. He's got nine. Well, this is where... Mays, Watford, Smart, they've got to take over on the offensive end. Maxi nearly got that thing to spin in, but numbers for LSU. Maxi's got to sell that call. There was contact there. But Watford was wide open on that slip. Baseline Days wraps his arm around Maxi, and they'll call follow on Tyrese Maxi. After Nate Sestina set this, oh, here's the, he sets a screen here, ball screen, and that allows 
Ashton Hagens to get through the middle and they get an advantage scramble situation. Juzang with the corner three. That was just really well done to break that pressure by Kentucky. To leave Watford alone, he's three is way off the mark, but a foul here. Looks like they're gonna get Johnny Juzang as he got his body on various days. Yeah, Juzang probably telling the official that's like calling holding 30 yards right. behind the play on, in a football game. How did the football team here do, by the way? You keep asking that. How, what would you? What is your memory of that? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> My memory was that was one of the little flex action. That was one of the best football teams I've ever seen. It certainly was one of the best quarterback seasons in NCAA history. Joe Barrowby talked about on Sports Center as he came out and talked about leverage. Three-point game. Quickly back in the game, so the knee appears to be okay as he tried to set himself up in the corner. And Skyler Mays will get called. Boy, this out of bounds play, there's a little screen here. This is called flex action. And the flex action gets him wide open for Trendon Watford. It's a play they call Terp. And they call it Terp because that's what Gary Williams used to run. A lot of flex action. From the Maryland coach, no foul on Mays on that trip down, just out of bounds off LSU. Maxi floater in and out. Richards battles for it. Keeps it alive. Look out, collision from two Kentucky players. Can't foul your own guy. Boy, they, these teams are playing so hard. Quickly, blow by. What a play by Emmanuel Quickly. Just a little in and out move. That guy's got some shake to his game, doesn't he? Yes, he does. When you've got players that can go get a bucket when you need it, Kentucky's got two of them, and I think LSU's got three of them. Here's one of them. Tough shot, Skyler Mays. We're just, talk we're, we're just looking at guys that are a few players on the floor that can make better plays offensively than the defense can stop. That was just a heck of an individual play by Mays, following another one by Quickly. No good. Quickly hard to the floor. We'll have some free throws. This is the second time in the last couple of minutes, Emmanuel Quickly is slow to get up. 15th straight game for Quickly in double figures. He's got 11. We'll take a timeout. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Try a big bacon classic today. Welcome back to Super Tuesday. Emmanuel quickly has been an offensive burst here for the Kentucky Wildcats. He is a great energetic player, but his greatest contribution, or one of his great contributions, according to head coach John Calipari, is the fact that he's Kentucky's attitude. And by that, I mean he's willing to be held accountable and hold his teammates accountable. Calipari told me recently that they need that if they want to take that next championship step. Hold one another accountable. Don't make the coaches do it. You guys do it. And he said the one guy on the roster who has no qualms telling anybody what he thinks is Emmanuel Quickly. Well, and Marty Quickly has played so well since the Louisville game. He really got started in the Louisville game defensively. I mean, he guarded Jordan Wara and really was, was the first player this year to shut Wara down. He's been shut down the last couple games. He actually shut himself down if you want the truth of it. But you know, quickly plays on both ends of the floor. And even though you know, he struggled shooting it the last couple games, he's 8 of 27 from the field in his last two coming into this one. He just doesn't quit. Never hangs his head, just keeps playing through it. And he never stops playing defense. He's guarding Skylar Mays straight up in this one. Gets over the screen, forces a tough shot. And Mays makes a tough shot. He's made his last two. That's just good offense. The defense was not bad. He quickly got over that ball screen, got back in front, and forced him to take a tough two, and, and Mays made it. Quickly is a plus nine when he's on the floor tonight. Nobody else 
is uh, in a higher plus category than quickly. Triple teamed is Richards. It'll stay with Kentucky. Now watch quickly. Comes a side ball screen. He gets over it, gets into Mays. Put his forearm right into him and then got right back in front. But Mays just made a, a good offense. There's that James Harden play. Quickly watches a lot of a lot of film of NBA players to see how they get fouled because he shoots 92% from the free throw line. If your arm is out, he's going to go right into it. Now watch the arms out. It's a little hand check and he goes right into the hand check. Just a really smart play. He did that two, three times against Auburn. The officials didn't buy that it was a shot attempt. Harden gets that call. Well, that is a shot attempt. I don't know how they, if you're going to call it a foul, it's got to be a shot. Maxie's open. And Kentucky shooting a lot better in the second half. Hagan's found him. Well, how did the officials give that on the floor? That makes no sense. That's so ridiculous. It's almost like they don't like making the call, so they're going to call it on the floor. Well, that's just a bad call. If you're going to give the foul, you got to give it the appropriate way. He was shooting. Hagan's moves to Mays. The dunk down. Oh. Look out. Emmett Williams wound up to throw it down. And Kentucky wouldn't allow it. Well, Williams used that off arm in order to shield off the defender, and that's honestly an offensive foul. The officials just missed it. I think they'll call this one the act of shooting. Emmett Williams, 6'6", 225 out of Fort Myers, Florida. Trying to throw it through Nick Richards. He misses the free throw. Saturday noon Eastern ESPN, the app as well. Baylor at Kansas, one versus three at the Farrell Center. It's Sonic Blockbuster, big time impact on the Big 12. Kansas playing really well. Baylor getting more votes than anybody for number one. A lot of people, including Will Wade, says San Diego State, you can't score against them. They just make life miserable. Well, San Diego State, you're talking about San Diego State yeah, Baylor. Yep. Nope, San, San Diego State, State is really good defensively, but they can score. And Malachi Flynn is an NBA player. A little 2-3 zone now from LSU. Just really good getting the ball in the middle and immediately out to quickly. That's just good offense against the zone. Simple. But collapse anytime the ball goes in the middle, man, you got to fan out to the best shooter. Offensive foul, Emmett Williams. But how big has quickly become as far as their offense goes? He's got 16 in this game. The crowd behind us sees the replay on. On a TV monitor that hangs above this floor that only Jay Billis has a bigger monitor in his house. I mean, this thing is enormous above center. Yeah, if I was at this game as a spectator, I think I would just watch the big screen. It's fantastic. They're going to get Richards on the illegal screen. Here's the offensive foul. I'm not sure I see that. Yeah, that's not a foul. Somebody fell down, they call a charge. I still think they need to change the charge signal. The official should not be able to use the air punch. Yeah, there, look, there's the look at that screen. <laughs> the only thing that would be better if our pictures were on it. Just when you thought our heads couldn't get any bigger. <laughs> They're on a 50 by 80 screen. Just what folks here really want to see. But don't you think the charge signal needs to change? No more air punch. They should just have to get in downward facing dog or something. You see charges. They wouldn't be called anymore. Days the offensive rebound. I didn't know we were going to go yoga tonight. But he is such a good offensive rebounder, Darius Days. He's only 6'6", but he gets almost three offensive boards a game. It's a big body under the basket. He's got a second, third jump. Kentucky 4-4 four four from three, second half, shooting 70% in this half. And now 8 of 11 as Hagens knocks that down. What a different half for Kentucky offensively. I think Ashton Hagens is back. He's playing with a lot more confidence. Now looking for a shot. Oh, my goodness, Javante Smart. The playmakers are starting to play, Ravi. The playmakers are starting to play. 
Both teams shot 31% in the first half. Kentucky's at 72, and LSU's at 63 in the second half. Hagan's being guarded by Watford. Foul on Watford. Hagan's will go to the free throw line. And he will take with him an 81% free throw shooting percentage. Last two games, Kentucky, second half, four of four. The previous three halves, they missed 28. So this is better. A lot better. This looks good on a big screen, small screen, any screen. If you're a fan of the Kentucky Wildcats, four threes, four threes made. Six-point game, 11.29 to go. The SEC on ESPN and a blockbuster. Much appreciate that, LSU, as the SEC on ESPN. Home team goes stack. We had a fan cam, and finally we got kind of fed up with it and said, forget it. We're done. We're not shooting us. Let's move on. Hagan's 80% free throw shooter misses. The lead stays six. Well, the good news for Ashton Hagans, he's knocking shots in. And he's being guarded by Trendon Watford, who's been playing off of him. And instead of just conveying the ball, setting screens, Hagans is going after the openings that, he, that he's being provided. A little 2-3 zone right now for Kentucky. Got to be able to drive the gaps of this. You can screen it, overload it, but you have to get into the gaps. You can't just windshield wiper it around the perimeter. Mark tried to get in the gaps. He sees Taylor on the baseline now open for a three. Can't get it to go. We're going to keep it right here. Foul on Emmanuel quickly. Maybe speaks to the athleticism of a guy like Marlon Taylor. They're very aggressive offensively, and they're causing some problems for Kentucky's defense. Yeah, Taylor looks so much better. We talked about the fact that he had an injury over the summer. But he's such an explosive athlete, and he looks like in this game he's got his legs firmly yeah. under him because he's made some really positive plays against Kentucky. Rolls the shorts up, perhaps a way to show how strong those legs are. We've watched some uh, old footage of Kentucky LSU games. Was that on the SEC network earlier today? Is that what we were no, it was on ESPN. It was on ESPN. Yeah, it wasn't on the big net, but it was, uh, they showed some old LSU uh, Kentucky games. And got to see Travis Ford in a Kentucky uniform. Uh, Sean Sutton back when he played, right. <laughs> he played guard for his dad, Eddie Sutton, who's uh, one of the finalists for the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. We brought it up because the shorts, that the way that Taylor wears them is sort of the way that everybody had to wear them back then. In the 80s, there's Dale Brown sitting next to the great actor Jim Caviezel. Jay Billis's new best friend. I didn't know that Caviezel was a, uh, he played high school basketball in the state of Washington, played against Quinn Snyder at the George Ravelins basketball camp. The first three in February for Nate Sestina. First in five games, and Kentucky's three point shooting has opened up. Their largest lead of the night, it's nine. They have been great from three-point land in the second half. Taylor will try his own. That's a two, and they will look at it. Well, that was a big bucket for LSU against that zone. LSU has to, they have to be able to answer this, and that includes getting stops. DJ Montgomery camped out in the paint. And they're going to call Emmett Williams for grabbing him. Yeah, Williams got the second foul, the first foul. Now the officials say, you know, they're supposed to call this. You wrap, if, you, if the offensive player wraps his arms around the defensive player, that's supposed to be a foul. And if you're going to let that happen, then you got to let the defender fight him. So that was the, they called the second foul. It is Williams' second foul. E.J. Montgomery had the first four points of the game for Kentucky. And he hasn't scored since. Higgins gets it to him, and he'll have a chance to add to it. And an air ball, but Sestina with zero on the shot clock, wow. counted for quickly. We will look at that as well. Boy, what a great play to save that ball by Nate Sestina to get it to quickly. It's just a question whether he got it off before the shot clock went to zero. 
air ball. And then what a fantastic play. I don't think he got that off. It looked like it was still in his hands when it went to zero. But it was awfully close. No. Yeah, that was it. He didn't get it off, so just a question of how long it takes the officials to figure this out. So they went to look for two things, whether that was a basket and then that call down the other end on the Taylor shot, and they decided that was a two. So that was a two for one for the officials. <laughs> exactly. Well, the, the SEC does a better job of replay than any other league because they have collaborative replay. So they go to they go to Birmingham, Alabama. There's somebody there to help them with the replay. It is much more efficient. Usually replay can be a nightmare, but not in this league. And then Williams tossed his volleyball because he locked it on the way up. Offensive rebound, no good. They continue to battle. Days misses it, and Kentucky comes away with it. Boy, that first exchange was a foul that just went uncalled. That was a foul, too. Contact. Maxi plays through it and gets it to go. A big difference in Tyrese Maxey yeah. to be able to finish that play earlier in the season. He probably wouldn't have done that. So fast. And then Williams picks up his third. Tyrese Maxey has an advantage on Javante Smart. Goes right in his body. It was no legal guarding position. That was a foul. Just went uncalled. a smart play to create that contact against a defender that wasn't legal. That was really a good job by Tyrese Maxey in transition. 8.56 to go, and to your point, LSU needs some stops. Down by nine. Maxey with 11 in the game. There's so much positive movement by Quickly and Maxey. They, they don't just stand. They move. So you got to chase them around. If you get if you get into a chase mode when you're trailing them, they're going to cut you up. Loader from Maxi, no good. And Days pulls it down. Good outlet. Javante smart bounce past the hands of quickly there to intercept it. They just tried to get a little bit too cute. Now an advantage situation for Kentucky. Hagen's rushed that and he threw it away. Well, I see your. <laughs> I see your dumb play and I raise you. Well, that was one where Kentucky could have stretched this thing out. Now LSU gets a score here. This game takes on a little bit of a different complexion. Good to A. Mays finds a cutting Watford and he gets it to go with the soft touch. Well, you really have to stay down on fakes. Boy, what a turnaround because of that. Turnover by Ashton Hagens. Now John Calipari wants to talk it over. Seven-point game. Kentucky a game ahead of LSU in the standings. Lead it 58-51. If you're watching the SEC on ESPN. Super Tuesday presented by Progressive. Very aggressive game. Yeah, take a look at LSU now. Getting the ball. Watch this offensive rebound. Days brings it down. Maxi rakes right across his arm as he's going up. And there's no call there. I mean, it's remarkable. You've got to be very strong with the ball. The officials need to see that. I mean, with all that contact underneath, I mean, you can't work that hard and not be rewarded when you're going up with a shot. But it just shows how strong you have to be in this game to complete a play because this is a very physical contest and has been from the opening tap. Kentucky 7 to 15 from three point land, five for five in the second half. And out of the break, see what play John Calipari tries to design. Looked like he wanted to get it to Richards. Well, they got to, he's got Days on. Days is 6-6. Six, six. Get him the ball and let him shoot over. Actually lost it and that's gonna be a foot race. Who's it off of? Looked like it went off Hagen's foot. This, as you said, and Hagen's is limping off the floor. And he's kind of banged up a lot of bodies on the floor tonight. Yeah. 
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. And in part by Zaxby's, hand-breaded chicken and fresh ingredients made to order only at Zaxby's. Physical game so far tonight. Kentucky up by seven. Loose ball scrum. That guy won it. And Hagen's felt the pain of it. Well, Hagen's had inside position for this ball, and he just get, he gets fouled. Like there's no question about it. It was just missed. Now, some might tell you in defense of the official that there was no possession, therefore it's incidental contact. That's not the incidental. That's a foul that needed to be called. They addressed Hagen's left leg injury, but certainly you saw him come back onto the court. And it looks like he's kind of in that quad area. He is. Banged up a little bit, and maybe Skyler Mays has some blood on his uniform, or maybe quickly put some blood on his uniform. Something. Yeah, so Hagens is going to have to come out of the game because he tried to go, and he's in some serious pain. Well, fortunately, Kentucky's got other point guards out there. Good pass. Days open three. High arc, or no good. Nick Richard sort of fell asleep a little bit there. And Days got a wide open shot. We'll take Hagen, by the way, to the locker room. We'll keep an eye on that. Both Marty to get an update. Both Maxi and Quickly have played point in their high school careers. Yeah, Days just pushed Nick Richards from behind, by the way. Yeah, Richards. You have to go into Richards when he's got this matchup. They're trying to isolate him inside. But you have to, it's easy to say, but hard to do. You have to break contact and get around in front to try to discourage that pass. You got Austin Wiley for Auburn, but Nick Richards presents unique problems for Kentucky. In this conference, in, the, in a lot of ways in the country, they allow Keon Brooks to step in. Yeah, it just wasn't well administered. <laughs> Richards free throw good. He certainly improved in that. That's the first point of the second half for Nick Richards. A totally different team in the second half for Kentucky from the perimeter. Seven of ten, and they've hit all five of their three-point attempts. LSU with the ball down eight. Conference champion last year, one seed in the tournament. With six games to go, you got a handful of teams still trying to win the SEC regular season title. Watford from behind the ball was nearly blocked. He goes back up, and he'll get fouled and go to the free throw line. Yeah, he got hit the first time, didn't get called, but made sure he got fouled the second time. Kept the ball alive and. Boy, the offensive glass has been such a big factor in this game. So hard to get a box out with these quick athletes that go after the ball that have second and third jump capabilities. Freshman Trenton Watford out of Birmingham, Alabama. A very unique free throw shooting style. This is the first. Watford, another McDonald's All-American. And when he grabs a defensive rebound, he's so skilled, he can just rip and run and take it on his own. Last eight games, he's been in double digits, and that free throw gets him to 10 in this game. Another come with full court pressure again, a little 1-2-1-1. Kentucky does have the unique advantage of having literally three guys that can handle the ball. Maxi quickly and Hagens, who went to the locker room to get that claw checked. They're going to get a foul. Richards will go back to the free throw line. Reach in for Marlon Taylor. See, the problem with Hagens out of the game is now you don't have both Maxi and quickly running off screens. You've only got one of them. Right. So it cuts your offensive weapons essentially in half as far as your, your cutters. But it, it certainly has made them more resolute to get the ball inside to Nick Richards. And Richards has been really active trying to get position down low. He's been really hard to guard the last five minutes. 
Seven points in the game for Nick Richards. Players that have improved Richards dramatically, quickly, dramatically this year. Calipari says, uh, you could argue there are other point guards better than Ashton Hagen's. you got to show me who they are. Well, he's one of the best, if not the best. But I would still say Devon Dotson. Richard. Richard's up there. Uh, Trey Jones at Duke, I would put up there. Malachi Flynn of San Diego State. We, we're lucky we've got a, a big, a great crop of really good point guards uh, nationwide. And then the SEC's got some too now. Kyra Lewis Jr. at Alabama's a, a big time point guard. Javon McCormick's done a great job at Auburn. Sestina, that one is another three that he drops down. And Calipari whacks his assistant coach on the leg to say, See, we knew this was in him. I'm not sure that LSU was particularly concerned about Kentucky's three-point shooting. I mean, Kentucky only makes you know, four and a half threes a game on average. They're going to burn you in the paint and off the dribble with their mid-range games, but they've done it in the second half from the three-point line. Six of six. Sestina's hot. He knocks down his third. They've made all seven. I don't think Will Wade's very happy. That was a four-foot stomp. Timeout. He was all over the place, man. Got to believe he said, "You got to get out on number one if he's hot," and he certainly has become very hot from three. Yeah, a little ghost screen, and you can't come off a ball side corner shooter. You just can't do it. You're not doing any good on the drive, and that's two that the freshman Watford gives up to Sestina. Look, in his defense, Sestina couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat the last three games, but he's still a really good shooter. And he was great against Ohio State earlier in the year with pick and pop ability. Went over a thousand points for his career in this game, didn't yep. he? Yep, he just needed one, needed one point. Point. Yep. And tonight, Nate Sestina's got 11. Again, he had not attempted a three in his last three games, and in his last five, had made just one. And yeah. he came here as a good three-point shooter. Didn't have a three in February before tonight. And now he's feeling it. And all of a sudden, this, because of the three-point shooting in the second half, 15-point game. 15 15-point game. That's a lot of stops to ask your defense to get, and especially a, a defense in LSU that hasn't gotten a lot of stops of late. Williams can't get it to go. He went after it hard though, and he was able to pick up an offensive rebound. Nick Richards fell asleep at the wheel, and they're going to get Richards there for fouling Taylor. Boy, talk about quick to the ball. Emmett Williams. He's explosive quickness. Sestina, a big story in this game, but uh, there certainly is another story. The Ashton Hagen leg injury he has gone to the locker room appeared to hurt that left leg left quad area try to come back in and he couldn't Sestina out of the game and everybody's like all right man that's that's what we need out of you yeah just make every three <laughs> but what a positive contribution on both ends and he's uh, Sestina did a really nice job in the glass as well yeah Saturday noon Eastern time, the Bill Australia will be at Baylor. They host number three, Kansas, the Farrell Center, and a sonic blockbuster. Of course, the Big 12 title is up for grabs. So is the number one seed, perhaps in the country, in the tournament. They may still both stay on the number one line, especially if Kansas wins that game. But I think they both can. Yeah. And, you know, my goal is to see another great game and also to see if Chip and Joanna Gaines will redo our bathroom for 20000 bucks. You ever watch Fixer Upper? Fantastic. I've watched many a Fixer Upper. But how they can redo a bathroom for twenty grand, i will never know. Don't they get, like, those companies to sort of get some free ads at the end of it and that allows them to kind of gratis the stuff they get? You think they're paying for all that stuff? I have no idea. But when they give those quotes, I'm like, man, I'm moving to Waco. 
three on the way. Manning's had a very good game. He's gonna he's gonna really help LSU. A good defender adds a different dimension, athletic, and he can knock down a perimeter shot. He's knocked down three of them in this game, but it's been few and far between. And right now, Kentucky gonna be smart and use some clock here because they've got a, a double-digit lead. They don't have to be in any hurry. Richards open. Look out. Yeah, that's just too Did he just roll his ankle when he came down after that dunk? I think he said he's okay, but boy, that scared him. He came down awkwardly on that right ankle on the same night that Hagens is currently in the locker room dealing with a left leg injury. Just at the end of a clock, they go with the high ball screen. And nobody picks him up. And Richard slams it home. Oh, he stepped on the ball. Oh, ouch. Oh, let's hope that's not serious. That would be awful. The crazy thing about this game, the interesting thing is, the whole point of it is to put the ball in that basket up there, and when you miss every shot and you're up one, I'm whistling and skipping going into halftime. 30% they shot in the first half. Our Capital One rewarding performance is how they about faced in the second half. Kentucky shooting 73% overall and 100% from three-point land. They are seven of seven in the second half. A 14-point lead with 3.47 to go. Trying to pull away further from LSU in the conference. As Calipari likes to say, you don't have to make them all, but you can't miss them all. But I won't complain if you make them all. <laughs> and in the second half, Kentucky has made them all from three-point range. Really, what a shooting exhibition. And even with Ashton Hagens out of the ball game, now there aren't many teams that can boast a perimeter like quickly Maxi and Hagen. Tyler Mays. Mays lays it up and in quickly, and it's an 11-point game. Marty listened into the uh, huddle from Kentucky. Marty? Ravi, in a year when Kentucky struggled a bit to close out games, they've been inconsistent in that department. Calipari just told his young men, how well are you going to close out this game without your point guard? You know they're going to press. Make sure you space well and be patient. Let's close this thing out. Maxi, no. Sestina can't grab it. Not the shot that Kentucky wanted. Wow, what a block. E.J. Montgomery from behind. A zero step, and Montgomery knocked it off the continent. The left-hander blocking it with his left hand, and Javante Smart never saw him. Nick Richards' ankle okay. Hagens has yet to return to the bench. Kentucky picks up their ninth block of this game. Big trip for LSU. Every trip is a big trip, but three minutes to go, you get it to 10. Or nine with a three. Yeah, there's still plenty of time left in the game to mount a comeback. Tyler Mays again, the time he took quickly to the hole. Really strong move right into the chest of quickly by Skyler Mays, man. He is a player. Maxi tries to dribble through three guys and succeeds. Deion Brooks slid his left foot there, but his right foot was his pivot foot, so it wasn't a walk. The crowd wanted one, but it wasn't. Richards That's battling down low with Days. That was a good job by Days to break contact, get around in front. Quickly leaves it in. Days was right there, but he was worried about helping up on quickly because it would lead to a just a, a quick lob to Richards. Days three, bottom of the net. And a quick timeout from Will Wade. Pulls him within nine. How will they close this game out? Emmanuel quickly 20 points on 7 of 12 shooting. Just a little pick and pop to get days open. You don't even have to set the screen. You just run to the spot. And that's awfully difficult for Nick Richards to guard. But the question is, can you, can you get stops here? LSU needs to get stops. 
They lost to Vandy 99-90. You look at the scores. There was a six-point, six-game stretch in which they won by an average of three points, never by more than four. So they've been involved in all sorts of close games. I can see over in the corner, Ashton Hagens is slowly making his way back to the Kentucky bench. Walking gingerly at yeah, very Kentucky bench. And that's a huge blow to Kentucky, not only in this game. I mean, if they had Ashton Hagens, then you've got Maxie and quickly you know, able to just look for their offense instead of worrying about getting the ball up. But you see he's got ice on his yep. on his thigh there. And now it's about ball security. Can't turn it over if you're Kentucky. Got to get a shot every time down. Chance to get to the free throw line. The value of a second point guard in Maxie. Richards was wide open. They didn't see him. Yeah, it didn't need it. They, they, the clock is their friend. They, they still want to take the clock down to under 10. Nice screen from Richards. Maxie in traffic gets it to go. What a shot from Maxie. Well, you talk about slippery and crafty. Foul, Javante Smart will go. But how about Maxi with 13, quickly with 20? The high ball screen goes right after the secondary defender, and Euro steps past him and is able to get that on the other side of the bucket. That's just a big time offensive play by Tyrese Maxi. You know, we started the game, Ravi, talking about playmakers. Yep. And that's what we've seen in this game. Skylar Mays has been a playmaker. We've seen Maxi and quickly be playmakers. Ashton Hagens, when he was in, made plays. I mean, you're not going to see that many games that post guards that can make plays for themselves, like in this ball game. Playmakers have played. In fact, it's been the guards that have really hurt LSU in the SEC. And you're looking at some really good ones. Saban Lee, of course, and Scotty Pippen Jr. Here's a turnover. Sestina, oh, with the block. Dowdy and McCormick for Auburn had 49 points, and tonight these guys, Maxie and Quickly, are doing it. Nate Sestina cannot catch the ball and put it over his head and let a trap come to him. That's exactly what he did on that last play. Caught it along the sideline and then just put it right over his head where he couldn't make a play. Watch this. The ball comes in, and then he puts it right over his head and then throws it away. I mean that's how you get that's how you get beat on the road and he's played so well it's just he you know when you when you put it over your head like that you've got no chance of making a positive play really the worst you want if you're Kentucky is you get fouled to go to the free throw line where Taylor makes them both he'll press again again no Ashton Hagens a big ice pack on his left leg Sestina, another turnover. Hagen looks like he's ready to rip that ice bag off of his leg. Yeah, Johnny Juzang going to come into the ball game, get Sestina out. Let's get another ball handle, even though he's a freshman. Montgomery takes Sestina out, Brooks Jr. out for Juzang. Got to get to the rim. That's Smart. Rich. Yeah, he's got Richards on him. Open three. Taylor knocks it down. It's a five-point game. They go back into the press, and this is where not having Hagens is playing a big factor. Shot clock, double team quickly to Richards. What a pass from quickly to Richards. And a beautiful cut by Richards to get to the front of the rim. Boy, that's a game saving play by Emmanuel quickly. And give Nick Richards great credit for having the presence of mind to get to the rim. He doesn't just stand when his man goes to get the steal, gets to the front of the rim and gets the bucket. Great execution at the end of a clock. Boy, that was a huge play. Foul on Richards. 
Yeah, that's the last thing you want to do yep. in this situation is put LSU on the line where they get to score with no time coming off the clock and set up a press. Gentlemen, the official word from the Kentucky staff is a thigh contusion on this play that you see right here, and he will not return. You, you noted, Ravi, the ice on his leg. Yeah, it looked like Taylor's knee may have gotten into that thigh quad area of Ashton Hagen's. It may very well be a bad Charlie horse that he's got there, but he's out. Darius Day is a good free throw shooter. She's about 78%. He shoots a good ball. Great rotation on. He's got a terrific stroke. Double double for days. His eighth of the season. 12 points, 11 rebounds. Key here for Kentucky, if he makes this, is inbound the ball cleanly. They put Williams in, take days out. This gives him a quicker, better defender. Thing can run the baseline. You almost have to think about fouling here. There it is. Maxie will go to the free throw line. He's an 82 percent free throw shooter. Wild stuff on the last three Tuesdays in the SEC. Missouri was down by 20 and one. All the schools on the left were down double digits and won the game. Kentucky led this one by 15, so it's now a Tuesday and on LSU to overcome a double digit deficit. Well, this is where Kentucky is a different team this year. Yeah. You know, they knock free throws down at just about an 80% clip as a team. That's fifth in the country. So when their guard, especially their guards, get fouled at the end of a game, you can count on them usually to knock their free throws down. Skyler Mays to the rack. Threw it up with his left hand, couldn't get it to go. I think it's off Kentucky. It'll stay LSU basketball. Well, Mays thought he was going to get a foul because quickly had his hands on him. So I think he figured, okay, well, I'll get a foul call. And just went in and threw that thing up. Six point deficit, 26 to go. Taylor and Manning and Mays, three point shooters, are on the floor. Mays right into Richards. Tough shot. Richards deflects it out, and LSU gets the basket. Nick Richards threw that one, deflected it out to LSU. What a play by Manning. LSU really attacking the basket, and that shows the presence of Richards to be able to go straight up and block that shot. But Manning right there and fearlessly goes back to the basket to get it off the glass. Manning's Offensive. played a really good game. He's today. really Pretty been good. a big lift, both defensively and with his offense, go double figures with 11 points. Boy, how big has the offensive glass been in this game for both teams, really? Generated a great deal of offense off their own missed shots. 22 offensive rebounds for LSU. That's incredible. 24 second chance points for the Tigers. Again, a huge game in the SEC as far as the standings go. Kentucky 10 and 2. Auburn will play tomorrow. LSU's 9 and 3. Florida with a win tonight. Mississippi State and South Carolina. Play tomorrow night. Alabama in action tomorrow night. AM in action tomorrow night. Both on the SEC network at 7 and 9 Eastern. A lot of work to do for Alabama, Tennessee, I think still Mississippi State if they want to make the field. Kentucky playing the last couple of minutes without Ashton Hagens. That left leg injury looked like a Charlie horse. He's got a big ice pack on, so they've been doing this without him for the last six minutes. 
That's a four-point ball game. They inbounds it to Richards. Quickly, he's a terrific free throw shooter, and he a foul. breaks the press with 12 seconds to go. That's way too wow. way too long. 15 seconds came off the clock. Yeah, they couldn't get to Richards fast enough, and Richards did a great job to get the ball out of that corner. But Skyler Mays had an opportunity to foul quickly on the sideline, didn't do it. That's way too much time to come off. Now you gotta you foul a 90% free throw shooter. So the top five or six in the country among free throw shooters, and you have to hope he misses. Four of four tonight. Earlier in the season, he was closing his eyes before he shot one. Yeah. But he stopped doing that. I don't know exactly when. That, that young man has got ice water in his veins. Funny, on a team that has Maxi and Richards and Hagens, quickly has become the go-to guy. And here's another night in which he's going to end up with 20-plus points. He's got 21 now, so sixth time this year he's gone for 20 or more. And he does it on the road. He missed one. Five-point game. Taylor launches a three, no good. Rebound as the shot clock and game clock are down to point three. And Kentucky is going to end up winning this ball game. Long inbounds picked off, but that'll do it. Kentucky comes into Baton Rouge and walks away with a three-point win. Our final score, 79-76. Kentucky moves two games ahead of LSU in the SEC. For Marty Smith, Jay Billis, Mike Ireland, and Scott Matthews in our truck, I'm Carl Ravitch saying so long. Time for SportsCenter. All right, thank you, men. I hope to have God on my side, but I must have Kentucky. Big blue road dog in Baton Rouge, a winner, improved 11-2 now in the SEC. That's must SEC basketball right there.